Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking at how we can actually communicate with an AWS DynamoDB instance using Spring Boot application. Now we'll be running a local DynamoDB instance on our machine itself using Docker. Now this Docker image is provided by AWS itself so it is pretty much similar to communicating with the real DynamoDB service on AWS itself. So with this let's get started. Now before we create the application to communicate with the DynamoDB, so first what we are going to look at is what is this DynamoDB and how the data has been stored. So now a DynamoDB consists of a table which has a collection of items. Now an item contains a collection of attributes itself. Now there are a few attributes that you can specify as certain keys such as partition key and sort keys. Now what are these partition keys? So a partition key is a key that will define where this particular item would be stored in which particular partition. And similarly, we have this particular sort key to identify the particular item in that particular partition. Now, a combination of these two particular keys form a primary key. Now, this is a composite primary key. Now, you can also have simple primary keys wherein you only have a partition key as the only attribute inside the primary key. Now, the remaining here are attributes. Now these attributes can be either simple attributes like which can be strings, numbers or some binary or they could be nested attributes such that they can have yet another level of attributes within themselves. Now this is just a simple overview of how DynamoDB stores data into its database. Now what we are going to do next is define our own data that we want to store into the DynamoDB, right? So let's go here. Now here I've defined a particular data that we want to store such that the ID is going to be the partition key and the creation date is going to be the sort key. Then we have a simple attribute called as name and then we have a nested attribute called as address which has some nested string attributes. So with this let's actually start creating the application. So let's go to start.spring.io and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add only one dependency that is the web dependency. Now along with this what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify Java 11 here we won't be using Java 17, we'll be using Java 11. And I will explain you why as we proceed. We will give it some group name and particular artifact name and generate this particular project. Now I've already generated this particular project and I have this code here. So first thing what we're going to look at is the POM file. So in the POM file, we have this particular dependency. So this Spring Data DynamoDB is a community maintained library which supports Spring Boot 2.2 versions and above. However, this particular library makes use of AWS SDK version 1 and that's the reason we used only Java 11 because the AWS SDK version 1 only works up to Java 16. So we use the last LTS version that is Java 11. Now what we are going to do is let's look at this. So we have this DynamoDB CRUD applications. Now this is the main class file. And then we have this DynamoDB configuration. Now, before going into the DynamoDB configuration, let's actually start with the model. So now I have this particular data model, wherein let's look at the primary key that we have. So we have this particular primary key here, in which we define the ID as the DynamoDB hash key. Now this hash key is basically the partition key. And then we have the creation date, which is of type local date. And this is the range key, which is actually the sort key. Now, apart from this, we just have some set of getters and setters. Now, this is the primary key class. Now, let's look at the person class. Now, in the person class, we have this particular primary key, which has been annotated with ID to tell Spring Data that we will be using this as the ID. Along with this, then we have this simple attribute here, which is of type string. And then we have this nested attribute. Let's look at the nested attribute now. So if we go to the nested attribute, we have this class been annotated with DynamoDB document and then we have a simple attribute called as country. So this covers up the nested attribute model part. Now in this person class, I have this particular getter method for the ID and I have a separate getter method even for the creation date. Now why am I doing this? The reason is because when we persist this particular object of this person class, we need to tell this DynamoDB mapper which is the particular sort key and which is the particular partition key. So that's the reason we are specifying this here as the hash key and we are specifying the attribute name as well as the DynamoDB range key which is a sort key and the creation date as the attribute. Now if you see here I'm adding this particular type converter. 
Now, why is this particular type converter being added? Now, the DynamoDB mapper doesn't know how to deal with this Java local date, right? So that's the reason we need to specify this particular converter. So let's look at this particular converter, what it does. So I have this DynamoDB type converter, which has this particular converter class here. Now here, this particular converter class that I have, it implements a DynamoDB type converter. And what it does is simply it converts this date to a particular string. And then it converts this string back again to a local date. A simple converter just to convert a date to a string. So finally, the date would be stored inside DynamoDB as a string value. Once we come back here, here we just have a set of getters and setters for all of these attributes here. What we have done here, we have defined all the data model, right? Now we need to do the persistence part. So for this, we are actually going to define a JPA repository here. We are going to define a CRUD repository wherein we have this person repository specifying this particular person that we want to store and then we have this particular primary key now you must be wondering that why did i specify in the primary key this particular DynamoDB hash key as well as the range key here and then again specify this particular annotation inside the getter methods of this particular individual components right the reason is because in your JPA repository, you cannot specify more than two identities, right? That's the reason we need to group them into one single class and tell the Spring Data JPA that this is the particular primary key or this is the particular identity on which we need to identify the particular object. Remember that I also said that we can also query DynamoDB only using the partition key, right? So for this, I've created this particular find by ID method, which will only take that particular partition key and return me all the persons that are persisted with that particular partition key. Now, this is the part about persistence and retrieval of this person class inside the DynamoDB, right? Now, let's actually do the next part that is connect to the DynamoDB. For this, AWS provides a mechanism through which we can actually run a local DynamoDB on our machine itself. So let's look at this particular Docker Compose file. And in this file, if you see, we have this Amazon provided local DynamoDB Docker image and we are going to actually run this on our local machine. Now I'm going to open this terminal here and I'm going to run Docker Compose up. So now our local DynamoDB is actually running on this particular port 8000. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to specify this particular connection into my Spring Boot application, right? So for this, I have this DynamoDB configuration here. Now, what does this DynamoDB configuration does is it actually creates a DynamoDB client to communicate with the DynamoDB. So for this, what we need is right now, we need these AWS credentials. So we are creating this AWS credential with some static key. Now, these can be just some kind of dummy keys. Now, I have stored them as properties inside my properties file. Here we create the AWS credential. So this is the basic AWS credential. And then we use this here to specify this as a credential. Along with this, we specify the endpoint configuration such that we can use actually the DynamoDB URL. Now I have specified this all in my properties file. So let's look at the properties file next. So in my properties file here, I've specified here the DynamoDB URL, which is localhost 8000. And then I'm specifying some empty access key and secret key. Why? Because we are not actually communicating with the real DynamoDB instance, right? So along with this, what I've specified here is this particular set of property. So here, what I have specified is I want to create the table in the DynamoDB by itself by using the data model that we have specified here, that is this person data model. So now Spring Data will automatically create this table for us using this person class that we have. So we don't have to actually manually create the particular table. If you anytime feel of creating this manually, you can always do this by this particular mechanism. I have commented this right now, but you can always refer to this on my GitHub repo, which is linked into my site refactorfirst.com. You can read about all of this onto the article that I'm being published on refactorfirst.com. With this, we are actually done with all the communication. We are done with defining the data model and everything. Now, finally, in order to communicate or to interact with the application, I specified certain endpoints here. So now here, what I'm doing is I'm specifying two endpoints. One is this post mapping, which will actually store that particular person data. And then I have this get mapping through which I'll be fetching that particular data. Now I have this path variable, 
called as id through which i will specify only the partition key but when i want to use the primary key that is the entire composite key i will specify it as a parameter so i am specifying here a request parameter called as creation date Finally, if we don't have this creation date, we will only query it by the partition. And if we have the creation date, then we will do it by the primary key. So with this done, let's actually start the application. Now the application has all started. So let's go to this Postman client here. Now I have this Postman client in which I'm specifying this particular JSON, wherein I have this particular ID and the creation date here. And I'm specifying a simple attribute called a Jerry here and a nested attribute that is country right so let's actually create this particular person when i send a post request this particular response tell me that the particular person has been persisted now now let's actually query this thing so i will take this particular id from here and paste it here and let's actually send this request and as you can see i can actually get this particular jerry person right i can now also do one thing is going to specify the creation date as the query parameter so now in this case we'll be querying it as the entire composite primary key so now i'll say send and i'm able to get the entire person now what i'm going to do i'm going to use the same partition key but i'm going to specify a different sort key so in this case i'm going to specify this as tom and i'm going to specify a different creation date and create this particular person so now we have tom being created with this particular creation date let's actually try to fetch this particular item so first we see that we are going to only try to fetch it by the creation date. Let's remove this creation date in this case and we are going to now query it only by the partition key. So now I've just specified the partition key here and press send. So as you can see, we have both the items being fetched. Now I can also again query for the Tom's record by using the creation time as 25 and we have the Tom's record present here. So. With this, we saw how we can run a local instance of DynamoDB on our system and then communicate with it using Spring Boot application. We then saw how we can actually store data inside it and then query it using the primary key and then only with the partition key. Now, I keep on exploring such kind of things. So if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more such kind of videos. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.